Hey YouTube, this is Matt, the long haired little guy, and I am coming to you with this week's video, and I'm doing kind of a reset on my channel, and last week, around Monday-ish or so, I asked if I should, I asked you guys if I should start a second channel, and the reason being is because I had some things on my mind, and being the winter time and long hair is kind of slowing down a little bit, I'm really feeling happy that I want to start sharing more of my faith on my channel. So what I asked you guys was, should I start a second channel and kind of segregate that to some degree? Keeping in mind that nothing, my faith is never separate completely from anything that I do. Uh, and if you watch my channel, you know that you get kind of uh, sprinkled a little bit with faith in there. But I want to share more of it. And overwhelmingly, out of the responses that I got, um, people wanted me to incorporate it into my channel. So this is what I think I'm going to do. I think what I'm going to do, because I know that some of you, some of you watch my channel purely for long care. Some of you like the aspect of my faith. So the crowd is kind of divided. And I want to make sure that I have content that's appealing to all of my subscribers. And I know that that's not 100% that I can't make everybody happy. And that's okay. I totally get that. But what I'm going to do is for the first part of my video i'm going to do long care and some family stuff maybe like the intro will have something to do with my family where the bulk of it will be long care but then the end of my video for those of you who want to know more about who i am and my faith and how that re is an influence on my life then stick around and i will share with you guys what i call my time alone with god tag tag time Okay, and what that is, it's going to be devotionals. Okay, it's going to be devotionals of my time alone with God and what I think God is speaking to me. And I'm going to try and share that with you guys. And I think for those of you that stick around, I think it'll be a really cool thing for you guys because you'll get to know me even more. You'll kind of understand probably a lot of the heart behind uh, my channel because it, you know, some of the stuff people may not understand, you know. and you kind, of, you kind of know who you are if there's something like, I don't know why he does that. If you kind of stick around for the end of the video and you start exposing yourself to my heavy influences of God, then you might understand some of that. Some of this may not make sense to any of you, and that's okay. But anyways, so what's going to go on this week? This week, I am going to uh, show you my project, my fencing project that I started last week of, of setting the post. And I'm going to show you how I set one post, and then I'm going to kind of give you an overview of the project uh, as it stands right now. And then um, I'm going to let you kind of know what's going on with my plans for next year, uh, which involves the, the pesticide applicators license in Oklahoma show you where I'm at with that. And then if you stick around, you'll get to hear my personal testimony about how God has influenced me and changed my life. Uh, and you'll get to know me a lot deeper. So stick around. I hope you do. And we'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so what'd you guys think about the fencing project? Have you ever considered doing that? Well, I kind of, I know that clip and it was about 11 minutes that it took me to set that post. So that was in sandy soil and soil does make a difference. Uh, I think clay soil around where my house is, it takes me much longer to dig each hole, probably about 30 minutes with a post hole digger. And you think an auger would work better, but I had troubles with that too because the clay kind of gets hard as a brick in some spots and you gotta be able to break through that. And believe it or not, the auger doesn't get through that very well. The post hole digger, in my opinion, does a better job. But anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope um, that, you know, if you're thinking about doing that, that, that that might have encouraged you that it's really not that difficult. And uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that part. So. On to the next segment, which is my plans for next year. My plans for next year are to become a certified applicator, which in Oklahoma it's different uh, than a service technician. A service technician is the guys that you see out on the lawn actually doing the spraying, but uh, and they may be a certified applicator, but uh, service technicians make up the majority of the people that are out there doing the spraying and they practice under a certified applicator. Okay, so somebody has to be a certified applicator and then service technicians can actually do work underneath them without having uh, the same level of, of uh, knowledge uh, and, and training. So, although in Oklahoma the training is actually the same but the test is different. So, I gotta tell you guys, here's the book. I don't know if it's the same in all states but this one um, is applying pesticides correctly, and this is the general knowledge course. Uh, the, core, the core exam is what they call it, but I'm gonna have to take two, at least two. Uh, one is the core exam, which everybody takes, and then also you have different categories, and, and mine is going to be turf, uh, turf management. And so I haven't begun to study on that one, but so far I am about that far through it, and uh, they've just come out with a new edition in Oklahoma for this, and it's actually, uh, much better written in my opinion and because uh, I, I remember I had trouble reading it before uh, but I'm having I'm getting through it a lot better now um, it's going through all kinds of things I'll, go, I'll just kind of go through the table of contents let's take a look at it here um, you got pests and pest control uh, which is insects talks about insects plants weeds vertebrate uh, pests which is ones that have a backbone um, and uh, so all these different kinds of pests um, then it talks about pesticide formulations um, um, well, anyways, uh, compatibility, like what you can mix and what you can't mix. Um, and it's not real specific. This is actually very, very general stuff. Um, and what I found out is that a lot of this material, or what it really comes down to is read the label. Because at least in Oklahoma, and it's governed greatly by the EPA, um, there are certain, or actually there's a lot of requirements that are supposed to be on that label. So much so that in many times they there's a, a line on the label itself that refers you to an entirely other publication because there wasn't enough room either on the container or on the label itself. So the EPA is very, very much involved in this. It was just something new uh, that uh, um, that I didn't know. Uh, of course, I knew the EPA was involved, but I kind of always seen the EPA um, as a very relaxed, laid back organization when it comes to protecting the environment, believe it or not, environmental protection agency, right? But I, I, I thought they always kind of leaned uh, towards um, commerce in that in that um, so it talks about labeling uh, it talks about protecting the environment as far as potential hazards um, a lot of it is uh, groundwater protection and also endangered species so it's really getting into a lot of stuff now I, I can't lie I'm not actually all the way through this part because I got to the part where it talked about nozzles and sprayers and it's geared almost solely towards the agricultural and not turf management. So I'm gonna be a guy that, you know, more than likely gonna be using a battery operated backpack sprayer to do most of my spraying. Um, and, but most of this material is actually geared towards the agricultural uh, aircraft, even aircraft dust, crop dusting and things of that nature. So I just wasn't interested in it. And I got so far and I'm like, okay, next chapter, please. Uh, and now I'm into laws. I just, uh, I just finished up the federal laws and now I'm going into the state laws. Um, so I've got that one and then I've also got this one right here I've got to study. And my goal is is uh, December. In December there's a, actually a course and it's a refresher course because I was looking for something like a college course or something I could go to over a couple of days or even a week I would take off of work and then hopefully I would take I would, I would go to the class, learn everything I need to know to pass the test. I'd go pass the test and I'd be cool. Well, as it turns out in Oklahoma, there is nothing like that. And there are things online that you can actually tap into, but I'm always, I'm a skeptic. 
I, I don't I don't I have distrust, especially when it's asking for money and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna get and I have trouble getting a hold of the people that can tell me. So there's online courses to help uh, study for the core exam and to uh, do what it takes to get your applicator's license, but I just don't trust it. So I called the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture and asked them if there's any credible courses out there, and they basically said no, uh, but they do offer a refresher course for those who are already licensed, and then um, the test administrators come in afterwards and will, and will administer the test so that people can get renewals. And that's the best that they have. And I said, are you sure there's nothing out there? And he's like, no, it's the hard way. You got to read the material and you got to study it. He's like, but I highly recommend that you come take our course. So I said, I think I'm going to do that. And that's in December. So my hope is that I can do the reading now. I can go to that course, that refresher course on December 5th. And then hopefully I will pass the course. And now the, the course examination has fees associated with it. And I'm going through this with you guys who are thinking about it so I can share my experience with you, but there are costs associated. Uh, these books cost me 50 bucks, okay? And then uh, the course is gonna cost me 30 bucks, unless I'm a walk-in, then it's 50 bucks. And then for each exam that I take, it is $50. So right now I'm into it 50 bucks, it's gonna cost me 30 bucks because I don't plan on walking in, so I'm at 80 bucks, plus another 100 bucks because I gotta take two courses, 50 bucks each. So there's 180 bucks to do the testing, and then after that I'm eligible to apply for my license. Uh, so just because you pass the test doesn't mean you're licensed, it just means you pass the test, and then you gotta apply for your license. And, it's gonna, and I'm gonna apply to be a certified applicator because no one else is gonna practice under me, and I have to, And but service technicians must practice or must apply under a certified applicator, so I'm an all-in-one. So, so that's what I'm going for, that's where I'm at. The material really isn't too, too bad, but I'm kind of a geek in that way, so it's kind of interesting to me, especially the laws, I really like the laws. Um, but anyways, um, that's kind of what I'm going through right now, and I hope I do well on that. So that's the end of this segment, and next, if and this, uh, this is going to be the completion of the long care portion, so on to my testimony. So this is the part, if you really don't care about that type of stuff, go ahead and stop the video now. Uh, but if you're interested in learning more about me, um, if you want to hear my testimony of God's goodness in my life, then stick around. I hope you do. If you don't, I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. Peace. We'll see you next. Uh, see those that stick around in just a minute. So, if you're still watching this video, then you are interested in the things of God, and I'm really happy that you stuck around. And I realize that there's going to be a few different people that might be watching this portion of my videos. Uh, there's going to be the person that um, doesn't believe. They just want to hear what I got to say. Um, there's going to be the person that isn't sure what they believe, and they want to hear what I got to say. Uh, and then there's the person that does believe in God, and they also want to hear what I got to say. <laughs> so in the end, everybody just wants to kind of hear what I got to say. Uh, but the reason why I'm going to share my testimony is because I think it's the most appropriate way to start anything. So you know where I'm coming from when I make the, the rest of these videos. So this isn't necessarily out of a devotion. This portion is actually going to be uh, part of my life. So I'm going to get with it. So um, I'm going to start more or less from the beginning of my life and this isn't going to be a, a, a life story type of thing. You're not going to know everything about me, but I'm going to kind of hit the highlights through my life and the things that drew me to God. Uh, but I can't do that without a starting point. So my starting point is my very first concept and exposure to God and that was when I was um, very small, very small, probably somewhere between three and five years old. Like I have very hazy memories about it. But this was a time when my mom and dad were married, and my dad, I know, I found this out later, but my dad grew up Baptist and my mother grew up Catholic. And for those of you that have some knowledge about the different denominations, those are kind of like two opposing forces right there. They're very different from each other, but uh, my mom kind of submitted to my dad at, as a Baptist. And the reason why I know that is because I've got this Bible that I've had my entire life and it was given to me by the church that we went to, and it was a Baptist church. And it's funny because that Bible was a King James Version, and I couldn't even read, much less read a King James Version Bible. It just happened to have some kids' pictures sprinkled through there, but, but it was relatively had no value to me whatsoever. And, and my parents didn't really live a, a life that was uh, consistent with Jesus at that moment. So it was basically just going to church. But then my mom and dad split when I was five years old. And then I do remember going to a Catholic church, and that wasn't 
an impactful experience. And then I re also remember going to a Baptist church at a time, and that was also a very, uh, very little impacting towards me in my life. Uh, and then I remember not going at all uh, until we ended up going to a new school because my mom had gotten remarried and uh, I was in about fifth grade, uh, possibly about sixth grade by this time, but my sister had actually brought me to a church because my sister, I've always had a concept that she'd been drawn to the things of the Lord. So she uh, took me to church and uh, probably just to get me out of the house because my, my stepdad was a, was really not a, not a good man. Uh, alcoholism, uh, abuse, verbal, physical, um, no, no sexual uh, of, any, of any sort. Uh, but it was very, very verbally abusive, and it was uh, um, physically abusive, uh, mostly to my mother and some to me. Um, but anyways, I ended up going to church, and my sister had invited me because she had befriended a pastor's daughter at a Pentecostal church. At least that was my concept of it. And uh, that was my first experience with the Lord, and I was just kind of like on fire. I don't know if I was just looking for acceptance or not, but but I was totally into it. Wearing the T-shirt and everything, you know, God's gym, woo, yeah, you know, doing all kinds of things. And and but I just lacked a lot of wisdom because I was so young, and, and I got baptized at that time. Um, and uh, but it wasn't shortly, but a couple years after that, where I really kind of fell off. I kind of started doing my own thing. When I got some freedom through a driver's license, I really started, you know, uh, straying. But God was always hanging out in the background there. I always remember the things that. I was that was, that were taught to me Wednesday nights when I went to church and and just the people that had, had invested in me what they knew uh, but eventually I did go away and I and honestly I lived pretty a pretty well normal life as far as society standards um, I, I drank too much um, I began smoking I, I dabbled in drugs marijuana a little bit of cocaine and uh, and a little bit of acid um, my family may be watching some of this video, so that might be kind of a surprise to you, but, but marijuana was really the biggest thing, and that started when I was uh, 17 years old, uh, and uh, I really just started going downward a lot, and that's where, and, and by that time I was already addicted to pornography. Um, I would steal magazines uh, from places, um, not stores, uh, but from places. I'll just leave it at that or whatnot. And uh, I was a guy that stayed, that kid that tried to stay up so late just to get uh, a glimpse at, at, at some at some skin on the cable channels at night. And and I found it, and I became addicted to that stuff. And and it's and honestly, it's still something that I battle to this day. Not that I submit to it, uh, but uh, but I have I have ups and downs. I have higher uh, times of temptation and lower times of temptation. But that's something that that started out very very young in me, and it continued through my life. Uh, so. Um, then I got an un uninsured motorist accident because I was working like three minimum wage jobs at that time, stocking beer, working at McDonald's, uh, you know, working in a bowling alley. You know, I mean, I had multiple jobs at the bowling alley because um, that was what I did mostly was bowling. And that was where most of my friends came from, not from church. I wasn't, I didn't have any church influence at that time. But uh, I wasn't paying my bills. I wasn't paying my insurance. And I got an uninsured motorist accident. And um, there's a number of things that happened in that time. But I... I started paying back that because I got sued for the for the damages to the other cars that were involved in the accident, and uh, um, I owed about ten thousand dollars, and I was uh, about nineteen years old, something like that. I might have been eighteen, nineteen years old at that time, and then the, the I was taking so long to pay that debt back that they they offered me. They said they they put an offer at me to and if I could pay off half of the remainder in 30 days then they would forgive the rest and and I didn't have that kind of money and I remember it was about uh, three thousand dollars at that time I guess I must have paid about four thousand dollars of it off but I didn't have that money and and my dad by this time I kind of uh, really put some distance my it was my choice and not for anything bad or any reason like that but I was just an independent guy you know I didn't want anything to do with my parents really I just wanted to do my own thing and and that's really affected my relationship with my with my 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 real dad and, uh, but I called him because I knew that, that, that he would be able to help me. So I called him and I said, Dad, I said, this is what's going on. This is the deal they gave me and, I, and I'd, like to, I'd like to, would you help me out? Uh, and give me the $3,000 so I can be free of this. And, uh, and he said, I remember I was kind of set back. He says, let me think about it. <laughs> I still laugh about it now. But, um, I mean, I really giggle because my dad, that was probably one of the smartest things my dad ever did. 
um, because what it did is he ended up giving me the money, but he, but it was under a condition that I either go to college and he pay for it, or I go in the military. So I said, well, college is not for me. Uh, so I went in the military. So I immediately had to give up uh, marijuana or any kind of drug use that I that I was involved in. Um, but the alcohol went through the roof, and and I now I'm retired from the military. But my first ten years were really bad. Uh, alcohol plagued me. Uh, everywhere I went and I went to four different duty stations and each time God was hanging out back there and and uh, because I'd say new place I'm getting new orders new place nobody knows me that's when I'm gonna go back to church that's when I'm gonna be a Christian but it never happened uh, the first night what the guys want to do is they want to take you out get you drunk show you a good time welcome you in the shop that way perfectly normal um, but then after that first night I just uh, uh, anything we had to do with God had to take a back chair because I now that I've gotten drunk in front of all these guys and acted a fool, how could I possibly uh, say that I'm a Christian now? So that went all the way through, and then I ended up in Oklahoma, where I am now. And uh, I found myself in a spot uh, where I had multiple failed relationships with women because um, they were all revolved around sexual uh, relationships. had nothing to do with getting to know the person, um, although I had given my heart over to them um, many a times thinking that, that I knew what was best for me. Uh, but they were really, looking back now, I'm so happy that none of those worked out um, because it was there was no basis, there was no foundation of truth or love in that, it was all about sex. And um, I had no money, I couldn't even pay my bills, um, still drinking, uh, still doing making poor decisions. And I remember thinking to myself, um, I am horrible at life. <laughs> I really suck at life and every decision that I make uh, is not working out the way I thought it would. Um, the plan that I had uh, is not working out like I thought it would. I'm supposed to be happy by now. I'm supposed to know I'm 28 years old by this point and I'm supposed to be responsible. Why am I having these troubles? At one time I thought I had it all together and then it just all fell apart on me again. And and I was coming to realize that, that the only way that I was going to get my life together as if I came back to the Lord. And I remembered everything, and not everything, but, but I remembered many of the lessons that I was taught when I was young, uh, in fifth, sixth grade, around that time. Uh, those folks feeding into me the gospel of Jesus uh, and how he is powerful to save us from our circumstances, but not just from our circumstances, but from this, um, uh, this hell that we put ourselves through, um, and then uh, ultimately uh, an eternal hell. And the thing that was most impactful at that time in my life is I actually believed in heaven and hell, and that was all I had. And I and I had fear at that time that I wasn't if I didn't get my life together, then uh, then then I was never going to be. And 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 after I die, um, the investment that I had in this life wasn't going to uh, bring me joy after death either uh, in, in heaven with, with the Lord because I didn't know if I was going to be there or not. So I lacked so much assurance. And this is about the time when I, when I met my wife and, and, uh, and she was also pursuing the Lord in a very similar time in life and we struggled with very, very similar things. And I said, okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. This is it. I made a decision right then and there that I am not going to continue to try to control my own life. I'm going to give that over to the Lord. I'm still going to do my best, but, but I'm I'm waiting for the Lord to tell me how to fix this because I'm I'm not doing it well, doing it right. So first thing I did is I went to church. I'm like, well, I guess I better go to church, you know. So I went down to the church uh, that uh, um, that I had already had a little bit of exposure to. I had ended up in in a different town with, with another relationship, and I ended up at at, at Life Church. Uh, many of you may know it, some of you may not, but it's a it's it's a large church in the country, multiple locations all over the place. But um, I, I walked up in this life church, uh, and it was a fairly new location at that time. And I'm listening to the message, and it was before I even got there, I knew I was going to raise my hand, and I was just going to give it away because I really, in essence, I had already given my, myself away. I had already made a decision that I'm going to follow the Lord now. So I did that, and then I'm waiting for the pastor to tell me more and more things. What do I do next? What do I do next? Well, it didn't take very long. The pastor started talking about, you need to get in a small group. Just go out to the table and um, uh, and, and get yourself in a life group. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I need to do. And then I go out the door, and I see that table, and I'm like, I'm walking out the door. <laughs> I'm not going. But then somebody tapped me on the shoulder. I felt somebody tap me on the shoulder. And I turn around, and there's this Asian guy there. And uh, and he said, hey, you looking for a small group? And I said, yeah, I am. He had no idea I was, I was heading for the door. Maybe he did. But, and then he, he gave me his phone number, uh, and he said, and, and, and I gave him mine. And, 
And he said, I'll, I'll give you a call later on this week, and I'll let you know all the details about my group that I have. I said, okay, that's cool. I walk out the door, and I'm thinking, I'm not going. I'm not going to go. Uh, well, long, long story short, I did go, okay? I resisted it. You know, he did follow up. He did call me, and I resisted. But I ended up showing up, and then he started telling me about his Bible study and the things that they do. And, and he, said, he says, here, you know, what we do is we focus on reading the Word, studying the Word, memorizing the Word. Uh, and applying it to our life and he was telling me about all this different stuff and I'm like whoa never heard this before never heard this before I don't want to do this this is like study the Bible like no I if I want to study the Bible I go to school I go be a pastor or something like that um, so I left that group and I said I'm not going back there but then he called me again and he says hey you know it's great to have you He's like, he's like, you think you might come? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be back. <laughs> so I kept on coming back, you know, because I couldn't say no. I just couldn't say no because I really felt in my heart that saying no to, to, to him would be like saying no to God in, in a way. You know, not that he was God, but I felt that the Lord was leading me uh, to that place. And I just couldn't say no. And uh, later on, um, uh, about a year or so later, um, I was going to separate the military, and 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 my my buddy Mike, he he said, hey, he's like, I'm fixing to go to Tennessee um, uh, to get my master's degree there, and I want you to come with me and do ministry. And that was a real dilemma for me because at this time I had really developed great feelings for my wife, and but she wasn't feeling the same way. And I was fix and I was actually on a deployment at that time in Iraq when he asked me. He emailed me, and prior to that, before I left Iraq. I couldn't shake the feelings for my wife, so I asked her to pray about the possibility of me and her. So I'm trying to pursue my wife, and then he asked me, he's like, you want to go to leave, you know, where all potential of, of a relationship with my wife, and, uh, uh, and go do ministry. And again, I couldn't say no. So I went, and, and I helped do ministry, and I helped to, to influence men for the Lord. And, um, and he taught me. He taught me what it was to love. And then in that time, um, the Lord was teaching me how to truly love my wife, which is so much different than before. Uh, before God, when I had no God, there was a time where I had no God whatsoever, and then God got a hold of me, and then this is what life is looking like now. Now my whole life is revolved around uh, trying to make a difference for the kingdom, uh, and that's so much different than when I was young. And I think that's why I I I, I didn't stick with it when I was young, is because nobody was teaching me what a real relationship, an authentic relationship with the Lord was. And it's when we, uh, when we love God and we love His Word and we desire to know what He wants for our life and then we put it into action. And what I've kind of found out is that the, 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 the whole meaning behind life is that we love God and we love people. So it's getting to know Him through, through the Word of God and then being able to transfer that over to another, uh, another person, another man uh, that would also learn to love God as well. And that's where I am. So uh, fast forward all the way to now, right? That was in 2006 is when I left active duty. Uh, I met the Lord again in 2005, and, and, and Mike helped me to cultivate a relationship. Now we're in 2018, so 13 years later, and I'm still um, investing in men. I'm, I'm still learning how to love my wife. I'm still overcoming uh, things that, that continue to... Uh, um, uh, try to get a hold of my heart and distract me from the Lord's purpose, but um, but I remain faithful to God's word. I remain faithful to the mission that He's given me to invest in, in people, uh, so that they would also know Him. And I'm leaving out so much about my testimony. I know there's so much. I mean, lives are complicated, right? I can't sum up 28 years, well, 42 years in this in this amount of time. But that's pretty much my road to getting to know the Lord. And and though. And one of the biggest things I'd like to tell you guys is that if you're on the fence, um, you feel the Lord pulling you as He was uh, pulling me and drawing me. Um, I want you to know that that you don't have to fear. You don't have to fear giving anything up, okay? Because that was my fear. I didn't want to give up my friends. I didn't want to give up drinking, smoking, sex uh, with, uh, uh, with with someone that I wasn't uh, uh, eternally uh, connected with. I didn't want to give up any of that. I thought it was going to be a drag and a bummer. But I want you to know that there's nothing more exciting than to share uh, the love of God given to you and show that to someone else and to see them experience God. There's nothing like that. And that's what I'm trying to do. That's always what I'm trying to do. And that's the reason why I share my testimony with you guys right now and why I want to make this a part of YouTube. So um, anyways, um, that's my testimony for the most part. I would love to share more about that. Um, I'll put my, my email address, my personal email address in the comments uh, or in the, in the description.
and uh, feel free to email me uh, and uh, maybe even one day we might be able to give a call or whatnot but um, anyways I just want to encourage you guys let me pray for you guys Father I just thank you so much for these guys that are men and women actually that may be watching my channel Father I pray that that my testimony has has in some way spoke to their heart Father I pray that I was used by you uh, in, their, in, in, in this time to affect them for your purpose, for those who you're drawing. And I know that there's people out there because I'm, I've always been praying for them. So Lord, I pray, Father, that, that they would uh, just stop working so hard and that they would just give their life over to you, that they would confess their sin to you and, and, and do what I did, realize that my way isn't working. And I know that, that Jesus has the power to, to, to affect me for the better uh, and to give me an eternal hope uh, that I would be in heaven with him. So, Father, I thank you for this time, and I pray that you bless these folks that are watching. Um, it's a blessing for me to even share with them. So thank you for giving them the heart to stick around and watch this portion of the video. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. So, guys, I just really do appreciate it. I appreciate you guys sticking around. I look forward to sharing with you guys again. It won't be so long. I'm hoping to do about seven minutes. Uh, there's a Bible reading plan out there called Seven Minutes with God by the Navigators. Great tool. So uh, if, if you've been inspired to read his word to, to crack it open. I, I highly recommend uh, just look up seven minutes with God on the internet. It's made by the navigators and it's a model for you to do quiet time. And I would suggest starting in the book of John, just chapter one, verse one, and just read it through. Okay. Uh, not all in one sitting, only seven minutes with God. So anyways, Lord bless you guys. Love you guys. I say the same thing to you. Um, I'm praying for you. Pray for me. Uh, and Lord bless. Peace.